Hello and welcome to a new video in a course on Galois theory. In this video, I'll continue to cover the background needed for the theory, uh, where we cover in this video um, some important facts about irreducible polynomials and polynomial rings, um, and this 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 is gonna be um, our our last um, background video, so to speak before we get into the core of the theory. Um, so um, just just a few, um, like I just, I just wanna do a survey of some important concepts um, <clears throat> as a continuation um, on the previous video. Um, so, so the first thing I wanna discuss is what's so-called a principal ideal domain. Um, so, so I remind you um, an ideal, uh, ideal of a ring R so let's say you have an uh, let's say the name of that ideal is I is first of all so so the ring R uh, like it has two operations say um, say addition and this multiplication so the idea uh, so I is set to be an ideal of of so a subset I of, of R is set to be an ideal of R if um, I along with the addition operation forms a subgroup of of R with the addition and and um, if you if you have an element in R and you have an element in I let's say an element X in I then it must be that R X is an I. So, um, so I is closed under multiplication by elements of R. So this is what an ideal is. Now, what is a principal ideal domain? So, um, so before, before we do that, let me just uh, remind you um, uh, as a brief summary of what we did in the last lecture. Well, we proved that uh, the, um, if F is a field, F is a field, um, then um, the ring Fx with the usual addition and multiplication of, of uh, polynomials, this is the ring of polynomials with coefficients in F, um, is, is a Euclidean domain. So this is something that we proved, which means that it's an integral domain um, where, the, um, where the division algorithm holds. So, um, so um, a principal ideal domain, here's a definition, a principal ideal domain, and usually spelled as PID, um, um, <coughs> is an integral domain, meaning it's a commutative ring with no zero divisors, it has the property that every proper ideal is generated by a single element. So, so it has the property that um, if I is an ideal in 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 R, so let me just uh, uh, let me just give this name give this a name. A principal ideal domain R um, is an integral domain with the property that with the property that for every uh, proper ideal of R, um, we have um, we have that I is generated by uh, just one element. Let's call it D. Okay, so I is generated. This this is spelled as I is generated by um, by D. So what does that mean? This notation means that um, I is just a set of um, all R dot D as as R ranges as R ranges over the elements of R. So this is uh, what it means to be generated by D. So um, so as an example for you, uh, the integers is a PID. The ring of integers is a PID because. Um, because the the um, the ideals of in the integers are um, of the form n z, and they're they're generated by um, so this is generated by the integer n. Uh, 
What I want to remind you of is that um, every Euclidean domain is indeed a principal ideal domain. And specifically, the, uh, the ring of x that we proved um, in the last video is that we proved it to be um, um, a Euclidean domain in the last video is actually a PID. And thus, if you take any ideal in that ring, it's gotta be generated by some polynomial f of x, right? Now, to see, to see why this statement is true, so why this statement, let's call it star, and to see why property star, or, and to see why statement star is, is true, um, you just need to, to recall that um, Euclidean domains come with uh, a norm function, so they come with a norm function. For example, in the polynomial ring of x, uh, the norm function is the degree of the polynomial. For the integers, it's just the absolute value of the integer. So uh, every every Euclidean domain comes with with a norm function um, that that um, with which the, the the Euclidean division algorithm is defined. Um, namely, if you have an element a and an element b that is not zero then a can be written as bq plus r for unique q and r and we require that r is zero or um or um the norm of r to be less than the norm of b so this is um this is how um, um how the division algorithm is defined in a general euclidean domain it's defined in terms of the norm function so um, you, you just need to know to see why property or uh, why statements or why statement star is correct. Uh, you just need to know that um, if you if you so start uh, with um, an ID um, I um, in R. So let's start with this ideal. If I is zero, we're done. So if i is zero, we're done uh, because it's already generated by uh, y zero, right? It's already um, um, a principal ideal. So principal ideals, uh, by the way, are ideals that are generated uh, by one element, right? So um, so this is called a principal ideal. Just a notation here. So um, so if if it's not zero. If i is not zero, is not the zero ideal, then there exists some a that is not zero in i. And what what we can do thus is that we can choose um, choose x to be um, of of i with the um, smallest um, norm, right? So we're gonna choose uh, x to be an element of i with the smallest norm. Now, um, any other element gotta be just um, in the ideal generated by x. So we claim that uh, i is generated by x, um, i.e. every element of i can be written as um, x dot r for uh, some r in r. Right. So to see this, uh, you just need to pick a b in, uh, or let me just pick a y in i, and let us use the division algorithm. So by the division algorithm, by division algorithm, we have we can divide y uh, by x with a remainder as such. So uh, there exists a unique q and r with um, r equal zero or the norm of r is less than the norm of x but but remember um but x was chosen um with the smallest norm so it can't be that this is it can't be that this holds which which forces r to be zero and thus y is equal to x times q uh, where q is an r, where q is an element in r. But this is all we needed uh, because we just proved that y takes this form. And um, that is it. This, is actually, this actually proves that i is, is generated by, uh, by the element x. And thus i is, an, is, a, is a principal ideal, which implies that i 
is a principle ideal, um, which uh, which actually proves that every Euclidean domain is actually a principle ideal domain because we started with the general ideal and we proved that this ideal gotta be principle. All right, and and now we're gonna move and and now we're gonna move to the next topic. Um, the next concept that we want to cover, um, which is that um, um, the concept of irreducible elements. So given a ring R, given a ring R um, with addition and multiplication, an element, um, let's call it R, is um, irreducible if um, the following holds, first of all, it's got to be uh, non-zero and non-unit. So it can't be that R has an inverse in, in uh, little r has an inverse in big R. Two, um, it's it got to satisfy the property that whenever uh, you write R as A dot B, it must be that A um, is a unit or B is a unit. Um, in other words, roughly speaking, an irreducible element is an element that cannot be factored uh, but to um, trivial elements, right? It can't be factored, um, it can't be factored um, into um, um, uh, non-constants, so to speak, right? So as an example, as an example, uh, if you look at the integer uh, ring of integers, the the element ten is actually uh, reducible, right? It's not irreducible because ten can be written as, for example, two times five, right? And none of two and five are units because recall um, the units in Z, the elements in Z that that have inverses are plus or minus one. Right, so these are the units in Z. Um, um, so, so we could factor 10 into a product. So 10 is reducible. Um, however, prime numbers, um, or, or for example, let's take 2, is, is actually irreducible. Like um, 2, the only way you can factor 2 is plus or minus 1 times plus or minus 2. So this is the only way. But it's got to be that one of these factors is a unit. And thus... Um, um, two cannot be factored into, um, and thus two is irreducible. Two is irreducible in Z. Um, so these are kind of um, concepts from ring theory that I'm that I'm reminding you of. Um, so, so this is the definition of an irreducible element, right? So uh, we're, we're interested in irreducible polynomials, right? So these are going to be irreducible uh, elements of the ring fx, right? Um, um, so, so before we, we talk about that, let me just do another definition. Uh, given a ring R um, with addition and multiplication, I remind you an element um, P... Um, of R is called is called um, a prime. So an element um, P of a ring R is called a prime if it's also uh, non-zero and non-unit. So it's not a unit. And second, um, it it should satisfy the property that um, um, if P divides A and B, then P divides A, or P divides B. So, um, so I should I should note here that there's a remark for you. Um, by the way, um, in in the the ring of integers, uh, the primes the prime numbers are actually prime. Okay, are actually examples of prime elements of rings. Um, so, as a remark here for you, I just want to say that. In an integral domain, um, in an integral domain, let's say R, um, all um, 
all prime elements are irreducible. Um, and it would be nice to prove this, so let us just uh, do this real quick. Um, so sub let p let p be so this is a kind of sketch or a proof or something. Um, let p be an R, uh, be a prime element. And we want to prove that um, um, it's irreducible. And suppose, um, suppose, um, so to prove it, it's irreducible. We're gonna uh, first suppose that it's it's equal to this, and we're gonna prove that one of these should be a unit. Uh, notice that we not we need not mention anything about um, it's zero or non-unit because it's already a prime. Thus, it's already non-zero and non-unit. Uh, suppose p is written as um, the product of a and b and want to show that one of these gotta be a unit um so since since uh, since it's equal to this then automatically p divides a dot b and then since it's a prime by definition of, of prime elements p divides a or p divides b um so suppose without loss on generality that p divides a then then you can write a as p times um some number a prime right but then um but then let's let's rewrite what we have here in this equation we will have p is equal to p a prime times b however however in an integral domain um i remind you cancellation is allowed right so cancellation is allowed in an integral domain and thus a prime b is equal to one and thus b is a unit so this is the definition of a unit a unit is just an element of the ring um, that has an inverse has a multiplicative inverse and here the multiplicative inverse of b is a prime so um we just proved that um if we if we suppose um if we suppose that p is equals to uh, a b then uh, um, one of a and b uh, gotta be a unit right um so so this proves this remark actually now now what's interesting here what's what's interesting here so here's another remark um in a pid pid in a principal ideal domain every irreducible is prime every irreducible element is prime so here's a proof um so um um to prove this uh, let us just note that um um so let's take p in in and let's call it this p id r okay so let's take p um or maybe not p let's take r to be in this R, right? And suppose R, <clears throat> and suppose R is irreducible, all right? And um, um, then um, um, then the ring, then the ideal I generated by R is maximal. Why is that? Well, because if if j is an ideal such that um, j contains um, contains i which is equal to r um, then we know that j gotta be equal to uh, some um, ideal it's gonna be an ideal generated by some element s because we have an pid in a pid every ideal is generated um, by some element of the ring. So this is for some s in R. And containment of ideals, um, what does containment of ideals mean? It means that um, R is, is in this ideal. It means R is in the ideal uh, s, which means that R can be written as s times some element um, uh, R prime um, in, in the ring R. Um, so R prime is in the ring R, which means that S divides R, but since R is is actually an 
um, an irreducible element, the only divisors of R can be either R itself or a unit, right? Because remember, this is this is how we defined um, what an irreducible element. It's an element that cannot be uh, written as A times B uh, unless one of A or B is is a unit, right? So so this forces S to be R or S to be um, a unit, uh, which means uh, the, the, the ideal G, which is S, it's either um, equal to um, the, the whole ring if, if S is a unit, or it's equal to the ideal I if, if S is odd, right? So this is the definition of a maximal ideal, um, and thus I is a maximal ideal, and every maximal ideal is prime, and thus um, the, the, the element R is prime. So um, um, I is prime, is maximal, and thus prime, I is prime, and thus uh, R is prime. All right, so um, so this is what we this is what I wanted to note here, um, and we're gonna be developing more on this later. I just want to wrap up this video by reminding you of of what a unique factorization domain is. So um, just um, just a definition here. Uh, we're not gonna do much about this because uh, the discussion on this is very long, and it requires a lot of time. So I'm I'm gonna assume that the audience have seen this somewhere in abstract algebra. Otherwise, I'm gonna refer you to uh, my um, to my course on abstract algebra to see uh, more about this. Um, so uh, a unique factorization domain. Um, factorization. Um, domain. Um, um, is is a ring um, that um, um, that has the property that um, um, if you take any such that um, such that for every uh, R that is not zero or a unit um, in um, in R so let's call this R. Um, 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 we have a unique factorization of R. R has a unique factorization as follows. It can be written as a product of um, irreducible elements. Um, so it can be written as a unit times um, um, R1, R2, and so on, Rk, whatever. Uh, where the R I's are irreducible elements in um, um, in R, and U is a unit. Just as for the integers, you can um, write every integer as a product of 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 primes. Um, you can do a similar thing um, in a in a unique factorization domain where you can write every um, every element that is not zero and non-invariable as a product of a reducible element. Um, it's unique up to the ordering. So I just I just want to say here that um, here's a big theorem um, that I'm not gonna prove because it's gonna take a lot of time to prove it. Um, um, so I just want to say here that. Euclidean domains are UFDs, and I should mention here that we um, we spell this as UFD. Okay. So uh, a unique factorization domain um, is is denoted by UFD, and we're saying that Euclidean domains are UFD, right? Every Euclidean domain is a UFD. Okay, every Euclidean domain is a unique factorization domain. And we know that um, the the uh, the the ring f x is a is a Euclidean domain, and thus it's a U of D. It's a unique factorization domain, meaning every polynomial can be written as a product of irreducible polynomials, right? So every polynomial can be written uniquely as a product of irreducible polynomials f one through f k. Uh, where each of these is actually uh, can be taken to be um, a monic irreducible polynomial, and uh, you multiply by a unit, right? 
So, um, um, so just to give you an idea here, recall in the integers, just to give you an idea where this unit is coming from, um, if you factor 6, you can factor it as 2 times 3 as product of, um, um, as product of primes, um, and we know that primes are irreducible in Z. Um, so so uh, if you take minus 6, for example, this is also an element of Z. This can be factored as minus 1 times 2 times 3. And recall, minus 1 is a unit in, in Z. Okay. So yeah, these are just quick reminders for you. So Fx is actually a Euclidean domain, and thus it's a U of D. And thus you can factor any, um, any polynomial as a product of irreducibles. Um, so yeah, I'm going to refer you to my... Um, to my uh, course on abstract algebra to see more about this, to see more about the proof of this. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a bit of a technical proof.